here with uh, Matt Donovan. He is a Pittsburgh local. Uh, so tell us, Matt, how you uh, how'd you, how'd you get involved in the, in the film uh, industry here in Pittsburgh? Um, well, for a bunch of years, I belonged to the the monster. I uh, got on the mailing list. I would um, find something and I would apply. And I think the very first thing I uh, ever got a hit back on was to be a Marine and warrior. Oh, cool. And, uh, but I, I had my oldest at the time was three and was working quite um, a bit. It just wasn't feasible. Um, and then I saw Warrior come out and I saw the scene. And I'm like, oh man, you know, maybe I would have been seen, maybe it wouldn't, it wouldn't have mattered, but um, I had some personal ties to that movie. I actually had a former student athlete of mine that was um, working and training with uh, Tom Hardy and, and oh, nice. Joel Edgerton. Um, so he was telling me some stories, which was really cool. Um, especially when, you know, one of your favorite actors is like Tom Hardy. You hear like, hey, I got to hang out at his rental house. And we were playing video games. And, and he wow. goes, you know, we used to text each other. And, and um, I mean, this was filmed in 2009, I think. Yeah. And... It was it was a great conversation. This kid was one of my best athletes. Just I think he was a, a named a, one of the senior football captains just on his work ethic alone. You know, probably maybe about five six. You know, wow. just like you said, you know, all heart. You know, heart of a line sort of thing. But the, it was such an engaging conversation, and I had such a blast with it. And we're talking about you know Tom Hardy's filmography, and he's like, yeah, he was telling me after he gets done with Warrior, he's got to go to Europe to film some new Christopher Nolan movie, and it wound up being Inception. Wow. You know, and that was right around the time he was getting cast as Mad Max and, you know, all, the, all that yeah, stuff yeah. was going on. And so it was kind of cool. It was kind of surreal. And just the movie itself had such an awesome impact um, to see how it was shot. And, and then Dark Knight Rises had come in and just to kind of see how things were starting to blow up around here locally. So to me, being, you know, a full-time father, working jobs and, and whatnot, it's just throw your name in the hat and see what happens. So long story short, Three summers ago, when they were filming the final season of Banshee, I saw something and they needed bald guys, tough looking types, and, you know, so I'm thinking, I, I'm none of those, you know, in reality, but I fit the mold, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, physically, so I, I threw my name out there and I think I got a call back the very next day and it was the opening of the very final episode, the mansion scene. Okay. Um, so there was like a group of like 40 of us wannabe hard asses right. <laughs> and uh, as we were filming that um, the casting director was going around and I got picked with I think it was about five other guys Nice. and we got to do another scene in Vandergrift. Uh it was a clubhouse scene where, where we were all killed by uh, Bowtie, Burton. So it was that connection that you had with, with your student, right? Yeah. That they got you interested, or no, or no, or you, I already was. You already was. I already was. Yeah, I've been a movie junkie. You know, I grew up in the Arnold and Sly era. Yeah. The movie junkie part of it. We, we would just kind of look at that. And me personally, I, I would watch certain types of movies, and I was never uh, the smartest. I was never a great athlete. But I mean, even in the coaching um, field that I'm in now, I always felt that I had a better knack for observing things. Um, but at the same time, I still didn't have the confidence to go the traditional route or maybe felt um, scared or embarrassed. Of, hey, maybe try film school or, uh, you know, I try to walk onto my college team and I think that lasted about a week because I, I, I was young. I just didn't have that confidence. It seems right. like I was kind of like a late bloomer in that regard. Um, so the same thing, kind of getting back to that, some movies I would be so attracted and enthralled to um, I would watch them and then I would come home from the movies and go, man, if I was directing that or if I could have filmed the scene that way instead yeah. of this way or, oh, I understand what he was trying to do. So, yeah, I mean, then if you have to sit there and, and all the stuff that we've all talked about, so we've met, met each other and, and had that opportunity to do in the last couple of years, um, not that I would ever be a director, but you watch a certain director's style of film. Yeah. And yeah, you always get have to get your own ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like I said, that's what attracts you. <laughs> so um, Michael Mann, um, David Fincher, obviously, who like we just talked about before this, like to see him work up close and personal last yeah, month yeah. was cross that off the bucket list. Um, 
the Scott brothers, Ridley and, and Tony Scott. I mean, the, the, anytime they have a movie out, I don't care what it is, I'm going to go yeah. and see it because I'm attracted to their, their style of, of direction. And yeah. generally, you would start to see the same thing. They use the the same actors, or it's yeah, it's almost like a fraternal organization. But I mean, like I said, that, that's what drew me into uh, it. I was actually on set for the very first time for Mindhunter. I uh, was checking my phone at during lunch, and um, hey, would you be interested in playing Marine for two days on Fences? And I'm like, whoa, you yes, know, you got to awesome. strike while the iron's hot. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, when I was on Fences, firmly, yeah. absolutely. I mean, ultimately, our scene was cut. But that's when I met a, a good buddy of mine. That's when I met Brian, and I've worked with him on several occasions since. But I sat there with him and a couple other guys and just like, listen, you know, just kind of how I was raised. You get some of these people that go on set and they're just so starstruck, or they're I'm here yeah, because I went to to film school and I've yeah. done theater and <laughs> and I'm gonna be the next this and next that. And and I, again, I think it's coming in and kind of like the back door and being a little bit older and. Yeah. And what Brian really taught me, which is something I'll probably take me forever, was, was two things. He said, one, um, it's a job. So, you know, and, and me being an educator or just being a professional, regardless, he's yeah. like, you show up early, you do what you're told, um, you know, you, you speak when spoken to, uh, ask questions when necessary. When you're done, you go home. Right. Um, right. And, and anything on top of that is great. The second day when we film Fences, um, I had Denzel walk right past me. Yeah. They, oh, they, that's, I mean, that, that was the like, same thing, another bucket list, you know, never wash the shoulder forever. <laughs> you know, he just walked in and went behind the door, was working on the scene, turned around, walked back out, kind of whistled. That's always, that's always a cool experience. It, it, absolutely. Like, yeah. That can't be taken away from you. I remember you know? I started on season two, the last two episodes of, of uh, Outsiders. Okay. And uh, that... It was a great experience, uh, like overall. You know, yeah. Just, just like how down to earth everybody was. Yes. Um, some of the actors were still on ca in character. Right. So you can't really like you know, not that I'm I'm always I'm always that 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 type of, like you just said you have to you know keep to yourself and you know if if they talk to you great if yeah, not, absolutely then just just be professional just be there and, yeah and, and be do, do uh, and like you said they're more often than not. When you strip it down, and like you said, the behind the scenes thing, they're all people just working jobs too. Right, right. I mean, they're in it for one reason or another. To some, it's a craft, and um, like I said, to others, it's a paycheck. But, but all in all, I think maybe you've only seen, in my personal experience, one or two rare occasions where it's like something that you hear about on the internet, like, you know, oh, Christian Bale was flipping out on a production assistant. <laughs> um, but other than that, everybody's just, just cordial and respectful and and at the bar I've worked at the last couple of years too, uh, like I said, they, I think they house a lot of people that come in to film these um, productions. So I, I've had the opportunity to speak with Holt McCallany when he was here for season one of Mindhunter and just kind of tease a little bit like, hey, I filmed you know a, a week worth of scenes with, while you guys were interviewing a serial killer and, and just you know very just uh, acknowledging that. And, um, I mean, just regular general talk, not just, hey, what can I do? What, I, I want to be an actor. Or, yeah. or just, I mean, same thing. If you treat them like humans, they'll treat you all the same. Is there anything that you dislike so far from your experiences that you've experienced uh, working in, uh, here in Pittsburgh on, on films and stuff? The lack of work. <laughs> lack of work. <laughs> I mean, you learn a lot, obviously. Um, I don't think I've ever had a bad time, and um, I always take every time because I feel like it's a privilege when well, you're chosen or cast or absolutely. background or feature or whatever. I mean, uh, the things that you know you and I have done together, um, I, I do. I feel it's a privilege, and I always take the approach that, well, this could be my last time. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you still go in with that professional attitude we talked about earlier. Um, but I guess it is almost like a, a, once you get a taste of it, it, it is some form of addiction. And it pushes you, too. Everybody talks about their being creative, um, knowing that they could do better. You know, I mean, same thing, you know, even in a town as small as this, is, and, and we've been able to be fortunate to meet each other and know people that have probably had more experiences. And, and 
Yeah. I mean, to me, it's it, uh, it's like I said, it's it's a privilege and it's and it's a paid hobby. Is it something I would definitely jump at if the opportunity presented to do more of? Yeah. Obviously, you know, to I mean, will you be able to make a living out of it? Probably not. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely takes 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 a while, especially when, when you're starting. Because uh, let's face it, it's the bottom. It's the yes. bottom of the bottom. Uh, but it's nothing to be ashamed of. No. Because uh, a lot of big names have started doing extra work. Absolutely. And um, one thing go, going in, going to work on these projects is that's just it. You know, it's like I said earlier, it's, it's a job. You go do your job, and whatever happens after that happens. Now, if I had to establish my ultimate goal, and same thing, you, you, know, you do things as you go through life, and you still, regardless of our age, you, you, you want to establish and, and try and achieve those goals and maintain those goals, um, or continue to challenge yourself, um, and at the same time, be realistic. Yeah, right. And exactly. which I said, I think, is because I've kind of came in at a little bit older and done through the back door, and like I said, try to be very observant. And my dream job or role would be that they cast you to be, you know, you're, hey, you're on the SWAT team for this action film or action series, and you get thrown, you know, a line here and there, um, right. and maybe you could work towards your SAG card or. Right. Um, because, like I said, I, I know like you're, you're a prisoner, you're a prison guard, you're an FBI agent, you're, um, I mean, that's just the way that it would be, is. That would be the, the ultimate goal. But in the meantime, it's uh, anything I see that I, I feel I could do, or there's some things you still just kind of throw your name in the hat um, and hope for the best. Uh, it, it's, it's a hustle. I mean, that's one thing I enjoy about of being here and growing up in Pittsburgh and everybody says if you want to make it big you have to go to Los Angeles or you, you know I, again <laughs> I, you know I, I, to an extent yeah, yeah I have kids I, I work a real job uh, like I said this is how everybody will come out and say oh this is a passion of mine and uh, yeah this is this is a, a, a pretty cool like I said side hobby to have that yeah. I'm lucky enough to, to be paid for it and sometimes some of the other jobs I've had I'm, I'm, I am paid more for it but you've got a hustle and like I said that I think the second that you, you stop that hustle or and it does it gets frustrating sometimes what do you hope to see in the near future um, as far as yourself as, as a growing actor um, and what what are your ultimate goals for, for the film industry personally um, same thing just keep hustling and taking advantage of any opportunity uh, that comes my way. Um, yeah, I'm continuing to try and create my own as well too. And uh, just like that ultimate goal we talked about before, if, if I got cast in that spot and, and was recurring and, and said thrown a line here and there, um, that that would be awesome. As long as it's still fun and enjoyable and and right. worth doing That's and, and meets my schedule, uh, I'm going to continue to do it because it's, it's something I wish I would have done years ago but Me never too. had the direction or yeah. or someone to, at, at that point when I was doing it in my life, they were like, are you kidding me? You'll never become a, uh, an actor. Or But then everybody is thinking along that lines is, you know, we just got done watching this Bruce Willis or Brad Pitt or, or whatever, you know, insert favorite actor here type thing, and and you're you're never gonna be that. Well, no, that's not my goal. I mean, you know, well, how you long never it's, know. You never know. You never know. You never know. Yeah. It, it, I mean, even some of them, but, you know, least expected roles are written, and it, it, it just winds up being a perfect story. Yeah. You know, so, like funny. I said, you know, is it gonna be the lottery, that <laughs> or death? And we'll see what it's, happens first. It's not unheard of. Uh, all was I was like thirty. I was thirty nine when I started. Forty one now. Mm -hmm. So uh, Samuel L. didn't start getting a lot of work till he was in his forties. I think Michael Caine started early, like later in life too. Okay. Or uh, and didn't make it for like ten years. Even he was a you know working actor. Right, right. It took him ten years to actually be the you know yeah the name that he is. Um, and I think uh, let me see Robert Redford started when he was like 34 or something oh wow like that. 
So yeah, I mean, we're we're in good company. <laughs> Definitely, and a lot of it is out of your control too. So um, you do you have to separate that competitiveness um, with disappointment, or um, you know, you see some people that like they might throw fits or tantrums or have an attitude about it. And, and again, depends on the situation. Um, I don't want to say it, it can be justified, but that's just them because they're they're driven to succeed. I got to be on set and, and watch David Fincher do, and the guy's arguably one of the greatest directors in the world. Absolutely, uh, do his craft and just watch his mannerisms and and the way he talked to people and directed people. Um, and it was, it was all professional, but in, in the same thing, you go to that, back to what we talked about earlier, about that sense of style of that person's direction or their personality, you you see that too. You get to see them as a person, you get to see them at their height, but you know, throughout the course of a 10, 12, 14 hour film day, you also get to, to see their cracks in their personality as well too. Right, you get exactly. to see them being human. Exactly. You right. know? You know what's cool about that is that you may work on one of their projects, and then you know a couple, of, you know, a year or two pass by, and you work again with them, and now you know what to expect, right, from that person. And that's yeah. what I did going in from this season as a stand-in compared to the first season, where you know he, I remember he walked by me, didn't know who I was to save, but he was just, you know, like I said, being human or being courteous. He walked by me and he's, like, "How are you today?" And I'm like, "Good. How are you?" You know. And then I went <laughs> home that night, and I'm like. You know, I mean, that's nobody can take it away from you. That's so cool. Yeah. So I had like Fincher and like Denzel walk past me like in a, in a week's time span. <laughs> On Outsiders, uh, the director, I, I forget his name. I, I forget his name because there's been there's been many right. like, different ones. But uh, he was calling me Alex. He was. He, oh really? Because uh, Alejandro, he was. He told. I guess he told him call me Alex or whatever. Okay. He was calling me Alex. And I was, you know, me being new, I'm like, I'm not going to correct him. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like, I'm Alex from now on. Yep. <laughs> so working on, uh, working on these projects, um, I'm a little hard of hearing on my left ear. So am I. So I'm always nervous, like, oh man, am I, am I be able to hear what they say? Because sometimes you can't, you know, sometimes I, and, and you can't see because of the lighting, sometimes you can't see who's telling you what. Yes. And, like walk this way and it's like where where, where? <laughs> yes. you know what I mean so, yes. so it's it's a little more challenging for me um, but uh, so far I mean I, I, I think uh, especially watching watching the, the footage that we did uh, in Trigger 2 uh, I think we all did awesome oh I think it was remarkable <laughs> for everything yeah. we did in, in one day's time yeah. and to have seen or, or done a couple other smaller indie projects like that um, it, it was almost like a forum, you know, um, you were giving us feedback, but then you were open to feedback. Yeah. So yeah, again, yeah. It, that's your directional style. And then mm -hmm. done a couple of things with a couple other people where it's like, we're going to do this. No, that's what I want. And that's what I want. And, yeah. And then you think you're giving them that too. And then they're like, no, 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 no. And, and so you're trying to give them what you want, but, and it is, it, 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 it's hard. I hate to say it, but. That's your mirror, but that's after the fact. Yeah. I wish I could see myself. I mean, if I wanted to be like super critical of myself, yeah. and I, I probably tease with you about this as well. Some of my other friends, I can't stand the way I talk. I can't stand the way I look. I can't. I can't stand my 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 you know bald head. You know. Yeah, you're or always I, more critical yeah, of yeah, ourselves yeah, than other yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, I can't stand any of that. You know. But like we were talking about earlier, like what would you ultimately like to get from that? Well, all those things I can't stand. Somebody write. That. The perfect character for me for that, and I will freaking knock it out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> true. And true. they just pay me enough so that I can, you know, put my kids through college and pay some bills along the way. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would be the ultimate, ultimate. <laughs> yeah, for, for me. Yeah, for me. Uh, I've always said to a few people, I'm not. I'm not looking. Fame. Fame happens if you're good at what you're doing. People like you. Right. You don't have no control over that. Right. You're right. Uh, but for me, I just want to have a career where. This is what I do every day. Yeah, you know, and I don't have to worry about oh, you know, what am I gonna do next? And, uh, that's why. If, if I've never not known that I have to wake up and, and go on set where it's I don't want to go, 
uh, I'm afraid something bad's gonna happen. I really don't feel like doing this today. Um, I mean, it's almost internal now. My body knows when it's coming. It's like, oh God, I'm not gonna sleep very much. I'm still excited. I, I wake up, you know, in very little sleep. And, and it's, if it was to go to your nine to five job, you're like, oh man, I wish I could call off today. I might, I might just do that. I am not a morning person. You ask no. Me, ask my wife. Never. I'll kill somebody. <laughs> But when it comes to like, if I have to be somewhere at four in the morning for, for filming, I'm there. Yeah. Early. Yeah, absolutely. I don't want to be late. <laughs> you know, Yeah. just just give me my coffee and let me wake up for a yep. little bit. <laughs> and and for some reason, it seems like those days seem to uh, flow. A lot better. And uh, yeah, they're so much more yeah. organized and, and potentially, because you, you're not in control of anything when you're on set. You're right. just being told what, what, what to do. It's, exactly. It, exactly. I mean, it, but it just seems like so much more organic than I have to be here from 9 to 10. Yeah. And then you from 10 obligated. I have to go. And then I get my 10-minute <laughs> break. And, and, and yeah, it's, so it's, it's, a, it's a form of chaos, but it's, uh, it's, an, it's enjoyable chaos. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right, Matt, well, thanks for being on the program. Anytime, and, uh, It's my pleasure. I'll see you around in another project somewhere. Absolutely. I look forward to it.